evening's presentation. Uh, we have a presentation around our District of Innovation plan from Dr. Taja Gross, who is our Chief Equitable Innovations Officer, to showcase a lot of the great work that we have been doing around District of Innovation and System of Great Schools, connecting those concepts to make sure that our stakeholders are well informed of what the plans are for us moving forward. So I do want to take the opportunity right now to just simply introduce um, Dr. Gross as the presenter for this evening and give her the opportunity to start the sharing of the information that she has for us. Dr. Gross, you're muted. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor ISD family. It is truly an honor and pleasure to be before you to share our District of Innovation and to share many of the exciting and innovative plans that we have for Mayor ISD. And so at this time, we will begin with the Minty meeting. This will be an interactive presentation. And so we want to really begin to share with you at a high level, uh, having a conversation with you on tonight. So we want to start with our opening Ignite uh, session here. And so we want you to pull out your phone and we want you to go to menti.com and you see the code on the screen, 516-5605. And we just wanna hear from you tonight as we begin to share our plans around the District of Innovation. What's the word that comes to mind when you think of innovation? Again, what is the word that comes to mind first when you think about innovation, we'd love to hear from you tonight and we'd love to hear your thoughts about innovation before we get started with our conversation on this evening. And we'll share this information with you in the chat as well. Absolutely different. Global practices, awesome. Trend setting. Evolve. So I know as you're toying through this uh, question in your mind, I, I think we have some wonderful opportunities to share with you tonight, but we just want to hear from you first. You are definitely a part of the conversation and we want to make sure that you have as many opportunities to participate and engage. So we really want you to really think about a word that comes to mind when you think about innovation. So we have evolved different global practices and trend setting. I know you, I know there's some others who may want to share in our audience on tonight. Our Mayna ISD family, again, menti.com. And we're using code 5163-5605. Awesome. We have some more coming in trend setting. Differentiation. So I know that you may be thinking of many others. And again, we so appreciate your engagement in our conversation on this evening. But many of the words that you have described here, new ways, differentiation, evolve, trend setting, global practices and different. And as more responses come in, uh, we, we really just want to say to you that these are many of the words that are on our mind as we think and go about meeting needs and doing things in a new and different way. Many of these words also come to mind uh, as Maine ISD leadership thinks through the innovation plan and really about many of the exciting and innovative options that we offer here in Maine ISD. So if we could just start with the agenda slide at a high level, thank you for your participation and engagement. And so we're gonna start the agenda at a high level just so that you are able to see uh, the roadmap for our conversation on this evening. So Mr. Vidal, 
we'll share in a few moments. So just at a high level of our conversation tonight, we are really gonna be sharing with you many of our plans and opportunities for you to get involved and engaged as we begin to talk through the District of Innovation Plan. And many of those will again be around the information for the strategic plan, really talking about that and really talking further through the system of great schools work and our equity framework. And so again, we just wanna thank you for being with us on tonight. And so as we as we talk through this, we want to talk to you more about what that system of great schools work, what that really looks like, what it sounds like, and really being able to be clear with you regarding our strategy on how we plan to get our schools to be A and B rated campuses and to provide high quality instructional opportunities. The equity framework, we really want to make sure that we are bringing you along in the process and understanding how our equity framework will support the work that we do around building high quality school programs and models. And we'll talk through the District of Innovation, particularly around school governance models, performance evaluations for principals, innovative instructional models, innovative scheduling options, and really more about how we plan to leverage professional learning pathways through the District of Innovation options, and of course, alternative innovative teacher certification pathways. So in Main ISD, we believe in putting scholars first and where this really lives is in our mission statement and really being able to share with you that when we say that we believe in scholars first, we're really talking about the mission of our of Main ISD of our community and is really to collectively as a community provide equitable resources, a safe learning environment and high quality educational services for our all scholars to successfully achieve and reach their full potential. And so some of the words that we talked about in the beginning are some of the words that you'll see here as we go along in the presentation, but we really have three separate pieces of work that are really interconnected. And we really hope that at the end of the presentation, you will see the interconnectedness of the work that we're doing here and MENA ISD and how it will support all scholars and being in high quality A and B rated schools. So the main ISD strategic plan is a, a blueprint. It is really a guidepost, but it's really more of the roadmap that aligns to our equity framework. And it is really where we really begin to manifest our goals and our roadmap for how we plan to get there. We also have the district of innovation plan, which we'll share more about that on, on this evening. But just knowing that Maynard ISD is designated and has a distinction as a district of innovation, which allows us to gain more flexibilities around curriculum, instructional models, professional development, and calendar options that we feel will benefit our scholars and help them to be more successful. And then we have the system of great schools work. So our system of great schools work is really an opportunity for us to expand the number of high quality A and B rated schools. And as you know, we have several school choice models with respect to new tech and early college and our inter-baccalaureate program IB. However, our goal is to make sure that all scholars receive equitable access to high quality A and B rated campuses. So what does this mean for us? having a conversation about what that North Star goal really looks like. And we really want to take this opportunity to be very transparent about where we are with respect to high quality A and B rated campuses. On the left-hand side, and this is based on our district performance by schools and scholars as of 2019, this has really been our priority and focus as we work through a quality seat analysis to really dig deep to find out where our campuses are and where our scholars are. On the left-hand side, you will see that the schools are being represented by color code. The color code starting from the top is blue. So 13% or two of our campuses are A-rated campuses. Currently 27% or four campuses are B-rated. In the C-SPAN, 
in the yellow span, you will see this is where our C-rated campuses are located. So approximately 40, 47% or 7% of our campuses are rated C. And we have the next level, which is 7%, which is one campus D-rated. And we have a final campus that is F-rated at 7%. And we just want to make sure everyone is able to see the presentation. Uh, Mr. Vidal, we had a comment. Just to, uh, we had a comment that there were some there were some viewers that were not able to see the presentation. So we'll expand the screen. We just want to uh, make sure that everyone is able to see. So we will expand uh, mm -hmm. so expand the screen out. There we go. And I'll reshare just to make certain that everybody can see the screen here. Ms. Ward, can you let me know in the chat if you're able to see the presentation now, if it's visible? Thank you so much. Thank you. And so uh, if, if we need to, if we need to just back up to the previous slide, just so that we're uh, we're making sure that everyone is engaged in the conversation. And so on the left-hand side, just sharing that this is the breakdown of the number of schools and percentages of, of schools that are rated A through B, C, D, and F rated. Again, at the top, blue indicates that we have 13% or two of our campuses that are A rated, 27% or four of our campuses that are B rated, which is represented in green. In the yellow band, you will see 47% or seven of our campuses, which are designated as C rated. In the orange, you will see that we have one campus which represents 7% of our schools. And at the bottom, you will see the red, which indicates we have one F rated campus, which represents 7%. On the right hand side, you will see that this represents the number of scholars who are actually sitting in the rated campuses. So again, 10% of our scholars in Maine ISD are sitting in an A-rated school, which is the equivalent of 981 students. In green, we have 21% of our Maine ISD scholars that are sitting in a B-rated campus, which is approximately 2,000 students, 1,964. In the yellow band, we have 53% or 4,921 of our students who are sitting in a C-rated campus. In orange, we have 8% or 715 of our scholars who are sitting in a D-rated campus. And in red, you will see that we have 8% of our scholars, which is the equivalent of 771 scholars who are currently sitting in an F-rated campus. So again, our strategy, as you can see, that the majority of our campuses are C-rated, and as you uh, can imagine that we are not accepting of D and F rated campuses. And so our strategy is A, to make sure that A and B rated campuses continue to perform and that we continue to expand the number of great school options and choice options for all families to get access and all scholars to get access to high quality A and B rated campuses. For C-rated campuses, which is included in the yellow band that you see in front of you, our strategy is really to strongly improve the instructional models so that we can work through an effective schools framework and begin to improve these schools so that they can become A or B-rated campuses. And D and F-rated campuses, our goal is to create innovative options to ensure that the approximately 1,500 scholars who are currently sitting in a D or F rated campus receive a high quality education and that they receive equitable access to an A and B rated school. And again, in the spirit of transparency, this is unacceptable D and F rated campuses. And our goal is to ensure that every student has high quality access to an A and B rated campus. And Dr. Gross, we do have one question in the chat from Ms. Carla Ruiz who asks, how can we see the names of each school and their respective rating? That information is, is available um, on the TEA website. 
And so uh, it, it's a clear breakdown of indication. And we're also able to um, look at the, there's a map as well that indicates the actual rating of campuses. So we can, add, we can certainly get into those questions um, in more detail at the end of the presentation. And Ms. Quick, I can see that Mr. Longwood is also typing in a response in the chat here as well. Okay, thank you. And we'll continue to move through the school actions just so that we are uh, in ensuring that um, we really gain an understanding of where we are. So our starting point right now, based upon the information that was just shared, right now we have 39.9% .9 or 40% of schools serving scholars in A or B rated schools as of school year 1819. And our goal, our North Star goal is for 86.6% .6 of scholars to be served in A or B rated campuses. So again, our starting point 40%. And as we move along the continuum, we will begin to take school actions to plan and implement with existing schools and future school options to ensure that by 2026, 86.6% of scholars will be served in a high quality A or B rated campus. And now we'd like to share with you specifically how we're gonna realize this mission and commitment to equity for every child in our district through school actions. And so as we begin to talk about school actions and planning these school actions to provide innovative and differentiate. These are some of our words, right, that we talked about in our uh, in the beginning of our conversation. But again, differentiated support and really designing these new innovations to address personalized learning and the needs of our scholars. Here are some of the actions which may be planned uh, for a particular school or community. And so let's just start with at the top redesign school. So one type of school action is where we support a school leader who is in place to develop a redesign and inspiring school model for the community based upon the needs of the scholars and the demand of what scholars need and want in the community. The second action could be restarting a struggling school. So again, this is where we transform an existing school by implementing new leadership and staff and implementing a rigorous turnaround model. Another potential school action could be creating a new school. So again, as we talk about designing and expanding school choice options that are designed to fill a particular need or gap in the community, a particular school action could be creating new schools reassigning to high performing schools. So again, as we talk about transition, transitioning scholars to other campuses, we just want to be clear and transparent that transitioning scholars, the whole intent is to ensure that our scholars are receiving access to a high quality school and, is, and they're being supported in the transition. And our last and final school action would be continuous improvement through the effective schools framework. And so as we begin to really work with schools around designing high quality models and programs, it's really to ensure that we're putting the systems in place, the instructional models in place, the academic intervention, interventions, um, tutoring, and all the other kind of supports that we know will support continuous school improvement. So we have a poll that we would like to initiate at this time with you because we really want your feedback and we really want to make sure that you are a part of the conversation. We will launch a poll which will allow you to really give us some feedback. But before we do that, I just want to make sure that um, we talk a little bit about the main ISD equity framework. And so as we begin to take school actions and as we begin to really design school choices that are equitable based upon the needs of our scholars, our equity framework is really our commitment to our scholars and to our parents and community 
that we are diligently aligning our school actions to the equity framework and ensuring that we have equitable access to high quality A and B rated schools. And so at the core of the equity framework, you see diversity and inclusion. Again, we know that our ultimate goal is to ensure that we're putting instructional models and we're, we're designing these school choice options to provide access. But the reality of it is we know that in some cases it has caused opportunity gaps. And so we want to be committed to really being clear and intentional about closing opportunity gaps, expanding access to high quality A and, re, A and B rated campuses, looking at this work through a lens of social justice, that this is a moral obligation of Maynard ISD to ensure that our students are getting access to high quality schools and really, really being intentional about the work around diversity and inclusion and what that means across the district as we respond to racial disparity, disparities and implicit biases, and in some cases, systemic barriers that have been long in place and have prevented us from moving forward and expanding great choice options for our students. In the center, you'll see professional learning and continuous school improvement. So this is a cyclical process. This is an ongoing process. We never stop growing. We never stop learning from you as our main ISD community. We never stop learning from teachers. We never stop learning and growing and really understanding more about what our students need and how our needs and demand come together to create these great school options and of course, continuous school improvement. And so that's a part of the conversation around school action, C-rated schools, what are we doing around continuous school improvement to make them be in A-rated schools, A and B-rated schools, what are we doing to make sure that they maintain a high quality of academic success for our students, D and F-rated campuses, how are, we, how are we being strategic about the actions that we're taking that are going to, really, um, that are going to lead to a high quality uh, opportunity for our students? The outer circle, again, this is where we're focusing our time. We're focusing our time on personalizing learning. We're, fo we're focusing moving forward from now into 2026. We're focusing on scholar-based budgeting and really having the community be a part and have a say in how the funds are being spent in schools. Restorative justice practice. Our students have experienced a lot of trauma. They have experienced learning loss. And what are we going to do to ensure that we use our restorative work through the social justice lens to really support our students in transitioning back and getting back on track and ensuring that every student is meeting with um, academic success and equitable school choice. And so as we begin to plan these equitable school choice options, how are we providing equitable transportation and the other supports that we need to make sure our scholars have access to them and looking at recruitment, hiring and retention of our teachers so that we have the best and brightest teachers in front of our amazing scholars. And so we really wanna hear from you and have a conversation with you. And the poll is up, the poll is live. So right now we wanna hear from you regarding two questions. What matters most to you in a high quality A or B rated school? And what matters to you when we say high quality in general? Two, what innovative changes would you like to see? And so we've shared a lot with you about our blueprint and our plan for building high quality A and B rated schools. We've shared with you a lot of how we plan to expand these school actions so that we ensure the students have equitable access. We share it with you about our equity framework and how we believe at the core of the work that we do, that we do it around the equity framework. And we've shared some insight regarding the main strategic uh, planning process, which is taking place now, which is underway. But you will be hearing more information regarding that and how all of these pieces come together to build a high quality system that our students will receive a high quality education. So again, the poll is live for you. We'd like for you to take a few moments right now. Third question, how would you like to be involved in the process? And so we don't wanna assume that we know how you wanna be involved. We want you to tell us how you would like to be involved because it is really about you, our main ISD community and bringing you along in the conversation. So the poll is live now and we'll, we'll continue to uh, ensure that you have access to the poll for the next two minutes.
So if you can see the if you can see the poll now, we'd like to we'd like you to participate in the poll. And Mr. Vidal, if you could just let me know when the when the poll closes. Yes, ma'am, will you? Yes. And I hope you, you are enjoying the conversation as much as we are. We're so delighted to have over a hundred webinar participants on this evening sharing with us and really being a part of the conversation. So we're really excited. Uh, to share this information with you, but it's really important that we have your input and that we know what's on your mind and what's on your heart as we begin to plan through our district of innovation. So we'll leave the poll open for a few more moments and we're hoping that you can give us your input and your feedback because it's an invaluable part of the process. And then we'll talk a little bit through the district of innovations. So I do see that everybody has gone ahead and answered the questions in the poll. Okay, great. So are we able to share results at this time? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. So we want to be transparent. We're sharing the results with you, our main or ISD community, and many of you are really saying what matters the most to you is innovative academic programming and a close second teacher and student classroom size and we're going to talk through the uh, district of innovation components in a few moments what innovative changes would you like to see so we have kind of tied here many of you are saying that you would like to see innovative changes around instructional models and others are saying as a as a tie innovative training opportunities for staff and for number three most are saying that you would like to be emailed and second, of course, is the MainISD.net website and really bringing you along. So this was great feedback and we just wanted to be transparent and share with you our poll results because you matter. As we talk through the District of Innovation um, options that we want to share with you, I just wanna make sure that uh, we start here with really talking about one, of the aspects of the district of innovation is, is around flexible school day and so when we talk about flexible school day we're really talking about those school actions that we just shared with you that allows us to really redesign and innovate a school campus in a way that allows us to have access to creating and innovating and instructional models that lead us to high quality A and B rated campuses. And so this would allow us to have the flexibility to do so. The next option is really about us understanding that we know that uh, performance of our school campuses are deeply tied to our performance measures and standards. And so as we begin to think through school options, this is really our opportunity to look at innovative evaluation processes that we have and really ensure that accountability is truly tied to school actions that we take. Because again, we are held accountable for creating the conditions for high quality A and B rated campuses. As an additional component to evaluations there is a particular component as it relates to school leaders and so we understand that school leadership is very important in that school leadership is really um where we understand and know that the quality of the experiences that our school and our scholar that our scholars have we really want to ensure that we are working with principals we're developing them we're coaching them and also holding them accountable um through a rigorous uh, evaluation process. Another aspect of the uh, District of Innovation Plan is really around instructional models and really having the opportunities here to innovate some of the instructional methods. So again, you know, that could be blended learning models. It could be problem-based learning models. 
but just giving us the opportunity to innovate instructional models that are clearly personalized. And so what we're saying is one instructional model does not fit all. We want to make sure that the model is personalized, it speaks to the needs of those scholars, and it really provides them access to the supports that they need. When we talk about student-teacher ratio, we just want to be clear. This is not about increasing class size. This conversation is truly about making sure that we were able to have flexibility in the arrangement of students and with our scholars to make sure that the model gives us the flexibility to work with students. So if we're working in a problem-based learning school, we know that the class size may be 10 to one. If we're working at a, uh, at a school where the instructional design may be 12 to one, 14 to one. And so again, this is not about increasing class size, this is about really looking at and designing an innovative student teacher ratio that is responsive to the actual instructional model on the campus. Another aspect of our district of innovation is really around minimum attendance for class credit or final grade. And so when we have confines with respect to 75%, but not less than 90% of the days, we really want to have an innovative opportunity for our students to go out to pursue other types of opportunities in the community. And so that may be work study, that may be dual enrollment, there may be other study abroad opportunities, there may even be opportunities for our students to go abroad. We want to make sure that we have the flexibility and for students not to be specifically tied to the seat, but we really want to be married to the opportunities anytime, anywhere. And we really want to redefine what does attendance really mean. So are we just looking at a student being in a seat? Or are we clearly looking at the experience and where they are and what they're doing? So we really would like to have more flexibility around innovating attendance as it relates to many of the uh, innovative opportunities that we believe would benefit our scholars. And so again, you know, we, we know the research speaks to the value of small class sizes that improve academic performance. And we really want to be able to, again, just be clear that this is not about increasing class size. This is really about ensuring that the class size ratio is really aligned to the school action or the instructional model or the redesign of the campus. So if we're doing a project-based learning model, we want to make sure small group instruction. If we're doing blended learning, we want to make sure that the ratio speaks to the model that is being implemented on the campus to make sure the students receive equitable access to what they need. Another aspect of our District of Innovation Plan is around this whole concept around teacher planning and minutes and so we value at Manor ISD, we value professional learning communities and we value opportunities for our teachers to really be intentional around the work of really doing this data-driven instruction. And so this is where we really take these time, this time span and this opportunity for us to really tweak our lesson planning. It gives us an opportunity to really look at learning gaps that students have and begin to really look at how we're going to personalize learning for each scholar. So again, this is another flexibility that would allow us to plan in a different kind of way to provide staff development and to provide opportunities to analyze data and to begin to do targeted professional development to increase our teacher capacity in the classroom. So this is just to reiterate more about our staff development requirement and really just being able to design an innovative calendar that is very purposeful and allows students, uh, scholars, as well as teachers to benefit from the professional learning opportunities and designing innovative professional learning pathways um, for our teachers so that we can continue to grow great leaders of Maine ISD. And to be more responsive to the needs as the data emerges, we want to remain flexible and responsive 
to data as we find more opportunities to close, uh, close learning gaps. And these are just the other codes that speak to professional development as well. Our district of innovation calendar options. So again, as a part of the district of innovation calendar, this just allows us uh, a number of flexibilities as it relates to having four weeks of professional learning and then having those additional days throughout the year. So again, we can build teacher capacity. Teachers have the opportunity to analyze benchmark data and of course assessment data, star data, so that we're more intentional and engaging around targeted professional development that is responsive to the needs of all of our scholars. And designing professional learning based on school action. So if you're a blended learning campus, new tech campus, early college campus, we really want to design and innovate targeted professional learning opportunities. In addition to that, just having more flexibility around the starting of a first day of instruction. And so us not having this particular flexibility just does not um, provide us with a number of ways that we can look at innovative scheduling and calendar opportunities. So as we begin to, for instance, um, talk about how scholars may benefit from year round schooling, we would need to have this exemption so that we could begin to look at flexibility, begin to look at some innovative calendar options and how we can improve curriculum and adjust our professional learning practices and that would allow us to do so. Another exemption, innovative alternate teacher certification pathways. And so while we're not, while we're very clear that all core academic areas do require certification, what we're saying here is that we really want an opportunity to really begin to look at ways in which we can have flexibilities around secondary, post-secondary instructors bringing in industry leaders and other experts and professionals as we begin to teach dual credit, dual enrollment, career technology courses, and as we begin to increase many of the pre-AP opportunities that will now be in the middle school. So we're really excited about the fact that pre-AP courses, advanced placement courses, will be offered starting in the middle school that will allow us again to leverage an innovative alternate teacher certification pathway. And so we're really excited about that, but that's just an opportunity and an example of how we really want to use and leverage this flexibility to, to make sure that we're providing innovative instructional models and options for our scholars. So again, we're just presenting with you certification requirements. And again, certification requirements will be in place for all core academic areas, but the flexibility would be applied to those opportunities that we really would love to introduce and hire industry experts, post-secondary instructors to begin to give our students access to dual credit, dual enrollment, STEAM, vocational and career technology education opportunities including pre-AP in the middle school and the continuation of advanced placement courses in the high school. So we want to first and foremost thank you for engaging with us, being a part of the conversation, really being uh, in a place to allow us to share with you many of the exciting and innovative plans that we have. This is the most crucial part of our conversation as we end. We would like for you to activate the QR code on the screen and we can also uh, make sure that you receive this information as well in the chat. However, we'd like for you to access the QR code and we'd like for you to give us your comments, 
any questions that you have, but we would like to have your feedback throughout this process. And so we thank you and we honor your voice and the way that we honor your voice is by providing us with feedback so that we can make sure that your voice is elevated in this conversation around the district innovation. Again, I wanna thank you for your participation and engagement tonight. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Superintendent Spencer at this time. Dr. Gross, thank you so much for that informational presentation and sharing the updates and insight for our community. Um, I hope that all of our community members have found this information extremely helpful and beneficial. We want to make certain that we're always providing you with the same information that we have internally so that you can have that information in your decision making as you're going about making informed decisions for each of your, your scholars that, that you had. So again, if there are any questions that you have for us at this time that we can answer, please feel free to place the questions in the chat or the Q&A section here in the Zoom, and we'll definitely provide a response to those questions. If by chance you do not think of a question this evening and you depart and you think of a question, I'm going to ask Mr. Vidal to put a link in the chat where you can go to and raise your questions so that we can make certain that we get you the answers that you need in your decision making. And again, I just want to say thank you to all that you do. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to serve you and your scholars. And as you all know, today was the last day of school for our scholars here in the Maynard Independent School District. And we will have some summer programs that are coming online this summer. So we hope to see many of our scholars participating in those programs. But if we do not see scholars participating in those programs, we know that they're going to have a safe and fun summer. And we look forward to seeing them back in the fall. And Mr. Right. Bedall, I'm not sure if there are any questions that are lingering out there, but if they are, if you'd like to raise the question so that we can provide answers. Yes, sir, I do see one question on our Facebook live stream and it asks, is it going to be mandatory to be in person next school year? We are anticipating that um, all of our scholars will be required to be in person for it next year as our parents may have heard from our governor that there is a lifting of all mass restrictions with regards to um, us mandating any mask wearing as of June 4th. And so we anticipate that beyond that, there will be a requirement for all scholars to return back to in-person instruction. We are encouraging our scholars to return to in-person instruction prior to the summer break which started today, we have been continuously encouraging our scholars to return to in-person instruction. And we have seen quite a bit of our scholars to return to in-person instruction. So we're continuing on that pathway and looking forward to seeing all of our scholars back with us in the fall in person. Thank you, Dr. Spencer. We have a, another question in the chat who asks, how is Maynard Middle School's rank? So currently, Maynard Middle School is our school that is an F-rated campus um, based on the Texas Education Agency school's uh, accountability system. Thank you, sir. We encourage all of our viewers and attendees to go ahead and drop your questions in the chat. At this time, we have answered all of the questions that are currently available. We have Mr. Ward in the chat who says, thank you for the information. Thank you. Okay. It appears that there are no additional questions that anyone may have for any of us. So again, we want to say 
to everyone who participated in this evening. Thank you for participating. We wish you a wonderful holiday weekend. So hopefully everyone gets an opportunity to get some rest this weekend and enjoy your family and friends and be safe during any travels that you may take as you are um, enjoying the holiday weekend that's upon us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Spencer. And with that, that concludes this evening's meeting. Thank you, Dr. Gross, for hosting a wonderful information session on Maynard ISD's District of Innovation Plans. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Vidal and everyone. This is Isabella, the interpreter. It was my pleasure to interpret once again. And if I don't speak to you in a little while, you all have a great summer. Thank you, you do Thank the you. same.